Greetings, fellow mathematicians. In this improper integral, we're going to find that it's very similar to the previous one and that we're going to use integration by parts, L'Hopital's rule, and another basic graph. Hopefully you're seeing the tools and ideas that we're using, basic integration methods, L'Hopital's rule, and a lot of basic graphs to help us with limits. So let's go to our improper integral. You can see it's not an improper integral of the first type since there's no infinities in your integral sign. Now this is an improper integral of the second type due to natural log of x. And again, this goes to the graph. Natural log of x has an infinite discontinuity at x equals zero. There's that vertical asymptote. So the problem here for this improper integral is with the lower limit, x equals zero. With that in mind, we know how to set this up. We're gonna replace zero with t, and then take a limit as t approaches zero. So let's set that up, limit as t approaches zero. And then we have an integral from t to one of natural log of x dx. For my students, I'm going to expect that they set up their limit correctly. And here, we want to make sure that we set that up correctly as either a limit from the right or the left of zero. So we're going to determine that by drawing the interval zero to one. It's a very basic sketch. The variable t is somewhere in the middle. And in order for t to approach zero, while staying within the interval, we're gonna to have to approach zero from the right side. Notice if we approach zero from the left, we're outside of the interval. So our limit here is really a limit from the right side to zero. So just make sure you're okay on that and you can set up and determine that correctly. Usually a basic sketch of the interval will help you with that. Now that we have our integral set up as a limit, we can evaluate first the integral and then take a limit. So let's do the integral first. And this we can do with a basic standard integration by parts. So let's focus first on the antiderivative. So for integration by parts, we're going to choose here u as natural log of x and dv as dx. You should know the derivative of natural log of x. That's 1 over x dx. At this point in your Calc 2 course, you've used that a lot. And when you integrate dv, Think of that as 1 dx. Your antiderivative for 1 will be just x. All right, we have everything here that we need to apply our integration by parts formula. We get uv x times natural log of x. And now minus the integral of v du. Notice x and 1 over x cancel out. So we just get minus the integral of one dx. And that's very simple. We actually already use that here. Integrate one, you should just get x. So our antiderivative, x natural log of x minus x plus c. And since we have a definite integral, we just need the part without plus c. So we have our antiderivative. And now we can just evaluate that with the fundamental theorem of calculus. Plug in 1, plug in t, and subtract. Let's take our time with that. So plug in x everywhere as 1. So we get 1 times natural log of 1 minus 1. 
and now do the same thing, but plugging in x equals t. So minus t ln t minus t. And there's some values here that you're going to encounter a lot. Natural log of 1. And notice from your basic graph, you can actually see that when your x coordinate is 1, notice the y value there is 0. Now you probably know that just from using it a lot, but natural log of 1 is 0. You can also get that from the graph. And it looks like we can rewrite our whole answer here for the integral. We have negative 1. We're going to distribute the negative through there, so minus t ln t. But be careful, distribute, change the sign so we get plus t. All right, and I'm going to just rearrange this. Let me just put the t in front. I'll put the minus 1 and then minus t times ln t. All right, and that is our answer for the integral. So the only thing we have left is the limit. So let's go ahead and plug that in. We have a limit. As t approaches 0 from the right, and we're taking the limit of t minus 1 minus t ln t. All right, now two of these terms are very easy to evaluate as t approaches 0. Here, t, as t approaches 0, that just goes to 0. Negative 1, that's a constant. That'll stay as negative 1 as t approaches 0, but it's the t ln t term that's a little bit tricky. Now, if you actually take a look at what's happening to that as t approaches 0 from the right, your factor of t, that's going to approach 0, but notice from your graph the natural log of t term as you approach 0 from the right that's going to approach negative infinity. So what we get here, this is an indeterminate form, but it's not an indeterminate form of the type that we need to apply L'Hopital's rule. So the next part, we'll get to applying L'Hopital's rule to evaluate that limit. Up next, L'Hopital's rule. Now, we already mentioned this limit is an indeterminate form of type 0 times an infinity, 0 times negative infinity. Now, we need to rewrite this as a fraction in order to apply L'Hopital's rule. And we don't have a lot of options here, but we're going to think of t as 1 divided by 1 over t. Make sure you're okay with that. That's kind of some basic algebra. When you divide by a fraction, it flips. So you're more probably comfortable simplifying that 1 divided by 1 over t back to t, but we're using it in the opposite direction. So we're going to sneak a fraction into here. We have a limit still as t approaches 0 from the right. We're going to have natural log of t in the numerator and t, we're going to rewrite it in the denominator as 1 over t. Now, if we check what type of indeterminate form we have, let t approach 0 for the numerator. Natural log of t, as you uh, let t approach 0 from the right, that's going to approach negative infinity. And 1 over t, your denominator is getting very small. 1 over a small number is big. So your denominator here also approaches infinity. We're good. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. And we're going to think of 1 over t to differentiate this as t to the negative 1. That's going to make it very easy to apply the power rule 
if you differentiate that with the power rule, bring the power down, and then subtract one, and you can write that derivative as negative one over t squared. All right, so that's maybe the only tricky part. We will apply L'Hopital's rule now, right here. I sometimes like to write a little LR underneath my equal sign to indicate that I'm applying L'Hopital's rule. The limit stays the same. So limit as t approaches zero from the right. And now we differentiate numerator and denominator individually. Natural log of t, that differentiates to one over t. One over t, that differentiates to negative one over t squared. Now this can get a little messy, but hopefully it's not too bad. If we simplify that, notice we're dividing by a fraction. We can multiply by the reciprocal. We'll keep one over t, but now we're gonna multiply by negative t squared over one. And notice you can cancel a power out and we're gonna be left with here simplifying, simplifying algebraically that is, that function or term will simplify to negative t. So finally, we get something that's pretty simple to evaluate. There's no indeterminate form here. Just go ahead and plug in t as zero. That evaluates to zero. And that is our work applying L'Hopital's rule to the limit here of this last term. Now we're pretty much done if we take the limit of each term, t, as t approaches zero from the right, that approaches zero. We just went through L'Hopital's rule and verified that t ln t, that approaches zero. And notice what we're left with. The whole limit here exists and it approaches negative one. Since the limit exists, our improper integral is convergent. Now this one has a nice interpretation from the graph that we already have there. We have the integral from zero to one of natural log of x. And if you think of an integral as representing area, here's zero, there's one. We're looking at the area from the x-axis to the graph so this area that we just found, negative one, matches what we expect there. We have the graph is below the x-axis and we can interpret that as negative area. So this matches what we expect graphically, which is really nice. Hopefully you're learning a lot from this problem, especially how to apply your integration methods L'Hopital's rule and how your basic graphs come in. If you're enjoying the content, support the channel, like and subscribe.